Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and today we'll take a look at and compare Samsung's secure folder versus Google's private space. Now Google's private space was introduced with Android 15 beta 2, so it's less than seven days old, but Samsung's secure folder is over seven years old. It was first introduced back in 2017. So I will have to state when you take a look at this video, Samsung's secure folder is definitely more refined, has more features, a little bit easier to use only because it's been around for seven years versus less than seven days. So let's first take a look at where secure folder is located on your Samsung phone, as well as where private space is located on the Pixel. Now, first off, when it comes down to Samsung phone, you do have the application icon. You also have it set up inside of your quick settings, and not only in those two spaces, but also through the settings. Now, when it comes down over into private space, it's just right here inside of your little application tray. Now, if you don't want it inside of the application tray, you can also turn this off and then only find it through the settings. So now let's take a look at how you're initially able to set up or activate secure folder and private space. Now both of these you just have to go through the settings. Now once you go inside of the settings on the Pixel, you go inside of the settings on your Samsung phone, they're both going to be inside of their security and privacy settings. So as you scroll on down, you'll be able to see security and privacy. Now on the Samsung phone, you'll just scroll down and underneath more security settings, this is where you have secure folder and this is where you're able to either enter it or at least get it turned on initially. Now inside of the Google Pixel devices, inside of your security and privacy, it's right there called private space. And once inside, this is what we are greeted with. Now right over here, when it comes down to the private space, it's just again inside of your application tray, you tap on private space, you put in your pin or fingerprint or however you have it set up, and then it'll show down here on the very bottom. So when you take a look, the experience is completely different. On the Samsung phone, it's almost as if it's its own entire unique profile. The entire screen is taken up for secure folder. And then when it comes down over into your private space, it's almost as if they just gave you a little bit of space on the bottom of your application tray, and this is where it's sitting. So this is where you'll find a lot of differences with the experience of secure folder versus private space, because secure folder is a little bit easier to use and manage. It's easier to bring over applications, bring over files such as photos or documents or videos applications. It's so easy. All you'd have to do is on and inside of your secure folder, you hit on this little plus button and here's all the applications that you have on the main side of the phone. If there's any of these that you would like to move over, you tap it and then you hit on add and it's added in. But when it comes down over into your pixels private space, you have your plus button but you can't pull anything from your phone. You have to search for the specific app you would like to download and install on your phone. So really you are installing a brand new application over here. It's just easier to do with this little plus button. And yes, you still have your two stores of the Play Store and the Galaxy Store, but again, you can't you know, press and hold or drag and drop an application. You can't just hit the plus button and then select what you already have on your phone. You do have to go to the top and add it in. So as you can see, application moving over, super, super simple. Now let me show you if you wanna move over files, maybe videos, pictures, documents, uh, you know, whatever it may be. Let's just say that we go through here. I'm gonna select, let's say this image and this image. Now what I can do from here on the main side of my phone is I can hit on more and I move it to secure folder and it's that simple. It just moves on over into the secure folder, but when it comes down over into private space, you can't move anything over. It's almost as if these two portions of your phone are completely separate. There is no overlap at all. I am not able to go into any of the files of this phone and move it over here. Anything that's inside of the files on this side of the phone was all taken on this side of the phone. So this image right here does not show on the main portion of the phone but it was taken with my camera here, again, showing right inside of file. So you're not able to take anything from the main side of your pixel over into your private space because they are so completely different when it comes down to, let's say, user profiles that you're starting all over and everything in here will stay here and you also can't take it out. Now, one of the big things that is a major win for secure folder and a major loss for private space is that anytime that you transfer to a brand new phone, secure folder with Samsung Smart Switch transfers to the new phone. It's fantastic, so you don't lose anything. When it comes down to private space, 
you have to completely start all over. Anything that you put in private space, you're not really able to get out and put into the brand new phone. So you'll just have to restart all over again with that brand new device. And if it's only just logging into applications, that's really no big deal. Now, what happens if you were to close out of it? So if I swipe up out of my secure folder, and let's say that I swipe up out of my application tray, in terms of the situation with the settings, it's still actually still there until actually I hit this lock button. Now on the Samsung phone, because I closed out of it, it locks immediately once it's closed. So this way it's staying secure and also encrypted if you want it to be. So I'm gonna go back inside, type in my pin. Now let's go over all of the settings. Now we'll go over the Pixel first, just because there's not much when it comes down to the settings. It's very, very simple and easy. You hit this little settings button and pretty much what you have is you have this. For the lock, this is how you're able to lock your private space. So you can use your pin, you can use your fingerprint uh, or face. Also, if you wanted to use the same lock screen or the screen lock that you had for the device, You'll just have to do it all over again when it goes down over into your private space. Now for me, I wanted to have a completely separate pin than how you're able to get into my phone. Then this is how you lock private space automatically. So this one is every time the device locks. So if I was to just press this little side key button here, the screen turn, turns off, it will lock private space. But if you just swipe up, you know, out of your application tray, it's still there open. You can also have the option of after five minutes of inactivity or only after device restarts. Then this is where you can actually hide it. So as I mentioned before, if you don't want it in your application tray, you can go inside of here and you are able to, to hide it. And then there's other places that you're able to actually find it, which is again, just through the settings. And then you also have delete private space. That's really it. You have one, two, three things other than the delete. Now let's head over into the Samsung side of things. And this one has a lot of stuff. You can sort everything. I can lock it and exit. I can encrypt it. So if I was to encrypt it right now and I know that I'm not going back into my secure folder for several hours, it'll actually just turn all the notifications off. It's gonna lock every single thing down. You know, it's see here, encrypting secure folder helps keep your data safe from advanced cyber attacks. When secure folder is encrypted, all apps will stop working and you won't receive any notifications from them. Until the next time you open secure folder, encryption will be deactivated and apps will start working normally and sending notifications. So you can completely encrypt your entire secure folder if you know you're not going inside for a while. You can also add files here. So again, this is going to be your pictures, your videos, your documents, music, anything. You're able to move it over from the add files. You can also customize it so you can customize how you want it to look. Now, out of the box, I believe it'll look just like this. It's blue and it has this little lock button. So for the purpose of this video, I was able to turn it red. I put a little key and you can even change the name to something completely different. You can just say, you know, load off or something like that. And people wouldn't even know what it is. They wouldn't even know it's a secure folder. Uh, and you're able to just change the way that it looks, you know, on your home screens. Then you also have your settings. So this was just some of the quick settings. And here is the full settings. Like I said from before, there is so much going on with secure folder that the, the, the private space has a lot to catch up on. So here's your lock type. You've got your pin. So I'm going to type it in to show you the other options. And so inside of here, you can do your fingerprint. You can reset with Samsung account. You also have password. You have pattern. So if I wanted to use my fingerprint, now I can get in with my fingerprint or the pin but I'd rather just keep it as pin just because that is what I'm used to. You also have auto lock secure folder. So as you saw from before over here, pretty much you have this button or a timeout or if it was to go into the lock screen right here. So once it went into that lock screen, it would actually be locked. Here's all the options that we have here. Each time I leave the application, when the screen is off, five minute, 10 minute, 30 minute, and when the phone restarts. So a lot of options when it comes down to the auto lock. You also have add secure folder to app screen. And if you didn't want it to be there, you would just have to find it through your quick settings or through the settings itself. And then you have all these general stuff when it comes down to notifications, if you'd like to have notifications come through or if you want them to be hidden. And then next up is apps. So this is all the applications that you have on this side of the phone on your secure folder, which is, you know, the phone, the camera, Chrome, contacts, and then anything else you added in, your Disney Plus, your Facebook, the Galaxy Store was already still sitting there. And then anything else that you add in will be sitting right there. You also have advanced intelligence. If you'd like to have this 
you know, incorporate when it comes down to your keyboard as well. You can turn that on. You have manage accounts, restore from backup. You also have more settings, which is data usage and uninstall. You have other security settings. And then inside of the other security settings, this is all the options that you have inside of there. So you can also have the clipboard if you would like it to move on over into your secure folder side of things. And then privacy or privacy policy and about secure folder. So this is all the settings that you have here for secure folder. Here's your quick ones over here to kind of get it going with the sorting, the locking, the encrypting, adding files, the customizing. So you can just kind of see just how much easier Samsung Secure Folder is. You can bring everything on over, any application that you want to move over, you can bring it over, you can hit undone, bring over bunches of them. Now just remember anything in the private space or Secure Folder is not seen on the main side of the phone and any of the applications that you have with private space or Secure Folder, they can have their own complete different login so you don't have to keep remembering it or switching between the two. You just go into Secure Folder or private space, you tap on that application, and now you're with that login details. So it does help out a lot. It really kind of separates from your personal to business side of things, or if you just wanna have you know, a couple different logins with applications or games, you can do that as well. So it's just a very nice place to bring things over here, keep them space, keep or keep them safe, and keep them separated from the main portion of your phone. A lot of times around Christmas is when I would actually bring in a lot of notes or pictures of things that I was looking to get the kids or the wife. So I put it inside of the secure folder so it's not able to be seen or anything that I just feel that I would like to have just secured and I don't want it on the main side of it. If somebody goes through the gallery, this is where I put it in. So that is everything that I wanted to share in today's video, how you can activate them, how you can find them, use them, the differences between the two, the similarities between the two. And if you've never used secure folder or private space, especially if you do have Android 15 beta two, if you're part of the beta program, definitely check it out, turn it on, activate it and use it. I use it mostly to store confidential information, you know, such as ideas for Christmas or additional logins on games. So this way I can go in the main phone, play the game, go into secure folder, play the game again. I don't have to log out, log in, log out, log in, whatever. It's just there and all set up. So hopefully you guys have appreciated this video and learned something new. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Also, if you learned something new, you have to subscribe to the channel now. Subscribe in the very bottom left hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.